The Oklahoma News Report is proud to bring you a year-long series of in-depth reports on Oklahoma's historic Black Frontier towns. We began this special series in February with Rentisville, and we continue in March with what was originally known as Langston City, home of one of America's 107 historically black colleges and universities. And fittingly, our report is presented by an alumnus of that school, Taylor Jackson. Taylor? Jason, both the university and the town are extremely proud of their shared history, which spans for more than 100 years. Community leaders are looking for ways to give Langston a bright future. The city of Langston was established in 1890. Seven years later, Langston University, then known as the Colored Agricultural and Normal University, was founded. 126 years later, the band is still playing and alumni are still returning for another much anticipated Lions homecoming weekend. Well, homecoming for us is a week long celebration, a daily celebration honoring the university's history, but also it gives you an opportunity to talk about the future as well. But imagine the town and the university and all of a sudden on between Friday to Sunday, you go from eh, 2,200 people to a mass of 15,000 minimum in bad weather. Around well, here, it's, it's almost like it's a holiday, you know, because you can go in, in anyone's house and they're, they're cook, they have cookouts and barbecues. Being able to feel the love from your alumni when they touch campus, I mean, it's from the parade early in the morning on to the tailgate. The homecoming parade route travels through the heart of Langston and onto the campus. After the parade, homecoming spectators make their way to the W.E. Anderson Stadium for the main event. And while homecoming brings visitors to the town, newly elected Mayor Michael Boyle says the money spent in Langston during the festivities doesn't stay in Langston's economy for long. That, that has a double-edged sword on it. It's, it's good, but it, it's not money that stays and circulates, right? So that's the kind of money that we want to stay. In 2022, Mayor Boyles created an economic development team to increase economic opportunities and improve infrastructure. So far, we've gotten a few grants that are for different fundings for water and helping with our water system to get that updated. And then we also have received another grant that is, I believe that is just for the historically black towns. And we are planning to use that as, as well for some infrastructure. Economic development team member Erica Johnson says her team created the Pave the Way project to make much needed improvements to city roads. Because a lot of our streets have been, um, either they've always been gravel or they've just over time really been worn down. While the city has received some funding to help update its infrastructure, Johnson says it's still not enough. Just being able to get some of those funds, but it's going to take time and it's going to take a lot more resources. But the town wasn't always struggling to bring in money. City founder Edward P. McCabe was part of the push towards Oklahoma becoming an all-black state. A.P. McCabe went to Washington, D.C. and lobbied to have Oklahoma territory become an all-black state. Of course, the overwhelming people that settled the land were, were whites and, and there was no way that was going to happen. McCabe created the Langston City Herald to advertise lots for sale in Langston. They started newspapers. Newspapers would go out through the South and, and recruit African Americans to come to Oklahoma and settle these lands. This led to Langston prospering during its economic prime in the 1890s. There were dozens of businesses and many homes. But during the Great Depression, the town began to suffer. Businesses closed and the population dropped significantly. The university helped carry the town, bringing more people to the area in later years. Langston has been home to Councilman Magnus Scott Sr. for more than 40 years. The former mayor says during his time in Langston, the university and the city of Langston have worked together to improve economic development. Dr. Hillsborough came in, a female president for Langston University, and she was very, very, very interested in working with Langston. Scott owned multiple businesses in Langston City during the 1980s. When I was in business, I used to keep my store open 
I mean, every day, even on Sunday, the kids will come beat on my door. Mr. Scott, it's time for us to eat some chicken wing. That's how busy it was. But things begin to just decline. But everything changed when Highway 33 was rerouted around Langston, bypassing the downtown corridor. But I believe after they switched the highway from coming through Langston, everything just went dead. We don't have that much traffic. In fact, when we have homecoming, the businesses don't do as well as they used to do. Today, only a few of these businesses remain. As the town tries to revitalize, at least two new businesses have appeared within the last three years, Tevin's Home Cooking and Lion's Main Beauty Supply. Yeah, and that's one of those secrets that only a few people on campus know. I know that uh, a lot of people from the surrounding areas, they would benefit, you know, greatly from, from knowing that they don't have to drive all the way to Oklahoma City just to get some hair, you know, or, or beauty products. Councilman Scott says city and university leaders must work together in order to bring in resources for Langston. Now I'm working with Dr. Smith. He's a very good man, and we are trying to reestablish that bridge. The one constant throughout the majority of the city's history has been the university. Established in 1897 as a result of the Second Moral Act of 1890, which authorized the creation of land-grant institutions for blacks. HBCUs, although they're designated, obviously, historically black colleges and universities, most people don't know that they were born out of segregation, out of uh, institutions saying we'd rather African Americans or blacks have their own institution rather than them integrating with the institutions that were, were in existence. Langston University President Kent Smith says while HBCUs were created to serve primarily African Americans, they've always accepted students of all races. To me, uh, HBCUs symbolize uh, not only hope, but also the opportunity to, to better yourself. Um, and when you look at African Americans as a whole, um, there's a lot of data now out there which uh, I tend to believe, which says uh, largely HBCUs are purely responsible for the black middle class. Langston University has grown immensely over the years. In 1915, only about 600 students attended the school. Today, more than 2,000 students walk the campus. President Smith and his team are currently working on a campus master plan to help propel the university's future. If you don't have a road map, any road will take you to any destination. And so ultimately, we now have an idea of what we want our destination to be, and we will have a road map of how we believe we will get there. But the beauty in a campus master plan is that it will be fluid. Many notable African Americans attended the university or lived in the town. In fact, standing behind me is the home of poet and educator Melvin B. Tolson, who was portrayed by Denzel Washington in the film The Great Debaters. Your weapons are words. In a time of change, he taught them to The 2007 fight. film depicts Tolson's time as a teacher at Wiley College in 1935, where he started a debate team that eventually competed against Harvard University. He was a poet, he was a writer. In fact, I've read about him in Liberia. In fact, he wrote some information about Liberia. And then when I came to Langston, I found out that he was here in Langston teaching at university, that he had taught at a university, and that he lived in Langston. Tolson left the Texas College and joined the faculty of Langston University in 1947, teaching English and drama until 1964. During that time, he also served as mayor. I have a building now, and I'm using that for Melvin B. Tolson. Center for After School Program. The only thing that's holding up now is to, to work on the heating system and the air condition. Once we get that started, we will open up. I've sp spoken to Dr. Uh, Smith, and he's willing to supply or give us some uh, work study students to help the kids with math, English, whatever. Other notable African-American leaders that have walked these historic streets, including civil rights activist Clara Looper, Melvin Porter, Oklahoma's first black state senator, and Ada Lewis Fisher, the first African-American to be admitted to the University of Oklahoma's College of Law in 1949. 
Langston families owning land is a major part of the area's history in trying to create opportunities for wealth among black families, the type of wealth that can be handed down through their generations. We still have receipts from my grandfather paying for the land, him having access to be able to buy that property in that time frame was a whole story in of itself. And I told them not to sell it, do not sell it. Let it remain with the Scott family until the last Scott family died. This has been a great week for us Lions. On Tuesday, the Langston University men's basketball team took home the Sooner Athletic Conference title and will compete in the NAIA Men's Basketball Championship next week.